This video contains a load of spoilers for Star for the following things. Star Wars, Star Trek, Halo, Mass Effect, Doctor Who, especially l the latest episode. The Flash, The Next Step, possibly. Riverdale, chill The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So, a lot of shows have got returning characters recently. And I've seen this as a recurring pattern. And I think that it needs to stop. You're not going to achieve anything by bringing back old characters and ruining them. In this video, I'll explain why they aren't good and how they could tarnish their legacies. So, let's begin. Returns are surprising. They can either give us a reaction of, oh my god, of, oh my god, they're back. Or, they can either be used for an, oh god, they're back. Or, oh, she survived, reaction. However, I've seen this repeated in many shows, especially Star Trek Picard. Next season, they're bringing back some of the original Next Generation cast, including Brent Spiner. When Brent Spiner already died in Star Trek Nemesis. You don't have to bring back old veterans just to make a show good. It kind of ruins them. I'll talk a bit more about the resurrection return later on in the video. But I'm going to start off with Doctor Who's example. So in the episodes The Stolen Earth and Journey's End, they had three Doctor Who spin-offs as they had two Doctor Who spin-offs, Sarah Jane Adventures and Torchwood. Both were spin-offs that were being shown on at the time. And they decided to merge them all into one episode. That was a good example of returns. Because they included... Because the other characters in the show weren't in it for long. They were just there. And they made... And they made Captain Jack and Sarah Jane work together for the first time. As well as returning characters like Martha Jones and Mickey Smith. And Rose Tyler with a surprise return after two seasons away. I think Rose Tyler's return was very surprising. Because we hadn't seen her since season two. And when Ro and we thought that Rose was gone forever when the door between Parallel Earth and N Normal Earth disappeared. The Doctor was devastated. But Rose came back and found a way, which has been tied up in Big Finish's The Dimension Canon. Another Doctor Who example, Doctor Who has had a lot of returns during its time. Like the return of Sylvester McCoy in the movie, even though he didn't have much to do. His 10 minute episode, his 10 minutes were to tie up loose ends to regenerate. And then in Dark Eyes, we have the return of the Alex McQueen Master. And it was more focused on him rather than the Daleks or the Master using the Eminence. In Doom Coalition, the main villain is a returning character throughout aside from Doom Coalition 3. But we also see the return of River Song and meeting the 8th Doctor as well as Cardinal Padrack and the Weeping Angels 
and we had the box sets classic Doctor's New Monsters, to which many beloved foes from the New Who era, mainly the Russell T. Davis era, met up with the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th Doctors. This was a pleasant surprise for us all. We've also had the returns of Davros in Big Finish, as well as the Unbound Doctor and Bernie Summerfield. These are all many returns that pleasantly surprised us. But the problem was, as well as Missy, as well as Missy returning, revealing herself to be the master. And if you want to go the Star Wars example, for instance, the return of Darth Sidious in The Rise of Skywalker. I literally lost it when Palpatine came on. And I think we all did as well when Scorch returned in The Bad Batch. The Star Trek example is the Borg Queen returning in the final of Voyager, as well as Riker and Deanna Troy returning in the last episode of Enterprise. And who could forget the return of Captain... Another Whovian example of the return is a beloved character who we haven't seen for years. So this is major spoilers if you haven't seen the next time trailer for the, the latest for the Sea Devil episode. I've forgotten what its name after, even the day after its broadcast. But they've brought back two beloved companions, Tegan Jovanka and Ace. Now Ace was originally in the Sarah Jane Adventures as said by Sophie Aldred herself. And they brought her back to the screen as well as writing her own book at childhood's end. Surprise returns are shocking to a lot of people. They're there to make sure that the viewer is interested. And in the Doctor Who The Legacy of Time, the Big Finish 20th Anniversary episode, they brought in David Tennant and David Bradley, all to reprise their roles as the Doctors. Now, this certainly was a pleasant surprise. But now, I'm, I'm going to go on to... Also, Mass Effect. The Mass Effect games are one of my favourite things of all time. In fact, I think Mass Effect has changed my life for the better. But in Mass Effect, they they we see many characters coming and going and tying up the plot lines. So for instance, Miranda Lawson isn't a core member in three, but she is essential in two. We see her again on the Citadel. Same with Jack and Thane and Jacob and many beloved crew members in Mass Effect 1 and 2. They handled their returns like it was the big finale and they handled their returns because they cared about the characters now in one of the next step webisodes by surprise they brought back skylar my all-time favorite next step character now i was so happy to hear about this and it was a complete surprise to everybody it turns out that she achieve what she wanted to achieve and and it all happened off screen now i'm sure someone will make a spin off or write a fan fiction about it or a story but this is how to handle a return also i'm a big wrestling fan and a big return was kind of like cody rhodes's return i know or the Hardy Boys return to wrestling. And obviously the Hardy Boys had quite... Also the Hardy Boys, their return wasn't anticipated. They were the extra tag team. 
When their music started playing, the crowd went wild. But almost, almost, although almost every debut in AEW is ruined by the media who say, "This is this guy returning." Many wrestling returns, like the Ultimate Warriors, was unanticipated. As was the debut of Scott Hall and Kevin Nash in WCW. It was unanticipated. Same with the Sandman's return in ECW. Heck, the crowd even sang his theme song. The thing about this is, these returns aren't, and there is a divide between keeping a return under wraps and saying that you're going to return to this show. It works better if you keep it under wraps. So, like the Ultimate Warrior did in 1995, was it when he returned? Any of. In the 90s anyway. And I bet if you were there. I bet. The adrenaline going through their minds. And the excitement they all had. It truly was beautiful. And. Also. You keep the secrets under wraps. No one expected to see Ace and Tegan in the next time trailer for the new Doctor Who. Neither did we expect to hear Q's voice in Picard Season 2. Nor did we expect to see Seven of Nine again. Now we're going to go over how not to handle a return. I'm not a fan of the resurrection method. Because I think it would just tarnish the character's legacy altogether. An example I would use is Jughead from Riverdale and Sabrina's Resurrection. As for Jughead, it starts off that he got killed and eventually throughout the seasons we find out that he was eventually murdered. And all through the fourth or yeah the fourth season, I stopped watching at season five, or the latter half of the fourth season. We saw the panic in Riverdale. And the fear on Betty and Veronica's faces. When Jughead was dead. However later on in the season. Jughead turns out. Turns out that Jughead survived. I was pissed off at this return. Turns out he survived. This is not how you handle a return. Another Archiverse example. Is the return of Sabrina. When a character stays dead, they stay dead. You don't bring them back and ruin their legacy. I was very satisfied with the ending of Sabrina. It was, yes, it wasn't the perfect finale, but it, at least we got to see the end of Sabrina and didn't we didn't get to see it turn into Riverdale because the writers of Sabrina knew what Riverdale was becoming and how everybody hated it. So they killed off Sabrina. Hope That was probably because they didn't want the writers of Riverdale to touch Sabrina. When they brought her back, I was really angry. How could they ruin a beloved character like this? Another example of the resurrection theory is Data. For those who saw Star Trek Nemesis, Commander Data sacrificed himself. And they resurrected him as well later on. They resurrected him in Picard season one. This should never have happened. Data's sacrifice was long was is one of the most iconic deaths in Star Trek history. And you you can't just do that. You can't bring back anyone. Like, bringing him back would just be tarnishing the character of Data. Then, 
another resurrection blunder is in Star Wars when they brought back the Emperor. Turns out he survived and Robot Chicken was right. He really... They let Rey defeat Emperor Palpatine when he could have been the most powerful Sith Lord of all time. That was an... And the Flash as well. Their excuses, it's just from another universe. Like with the death of... Like with Caitlin Snow and Killer Frost. One Caitlin Snow's from another universe. And as much as I like Harrison Wells, it kind of got a bit boring when it got to season five. I think they should have kept H.R. Wells alive and not killed him off because he was the best Wells. It would just be completely worthless if you just brought back a character who'd already been killed off in another show or in another season. Captain Jack Harkness was resurrected. But that's a good example because they made him immortal. That Russell T. Davis had an explanation. Whereas... Sabrina's resurrection doesn't do that. They just say, oh, some weird culty stuff happened. Bearing in mind, we have the two Sabrinas. Now, Nicholas Briggs, who was a writer for Big Finish and an actor, killed off Lucy Miller, one of his... one of the best Doctor Who companions I've ever heard on Big Finish. They killed her off, and quite rightly so, because it would ruin the character. Mr. Briggs is right. If you bring back a character, it'll ruin them. Even if they've been killed off. Same with Spock. Heck, his death in The Wrath of Khan has one of the most iconic lines. The most iconic death scenes in the history of movies. And when they brought him back... I bet a lot of the fans weren't happy. Yes, Spock's the most iconic alien character in the history of sci-fi. But they brought him back, which was kind of worthless. Now, Mass Effect doesn't allow anyone to come back. It doesn't allow anyone to be resurrected from the dead. Another lesson that would be of use to this is Owen Harper from Torchwood. So Owen Harper was brought back from the dead by a stone thing. And he didn't he hated being immortal. Everyone on the team would could see the torture that he was going through and the pain. I think Owen demonstrates that immortality isn't good. Nor you should bring back a character. I think that was Russell T. Davis's way of saying, this is what happens when you uh, resurrect a character from the dead. Misusing a character would just ruin their careers. The next step I'm also going to call out on this. So one storyline where Amy was going to leave the next step and it was all so emotional. Then the next season she returned. That isn't how you do a return. It was so her leaving was just pointless. At least you could have had Amy starting her own dance company to compete at nationals. That's how I would do it anyway. And more next step characters who leave and then return. Michelle. I hate how she was the admirer all along and not someone like Hunter. Then in the next step special you get Riley who also returned. It's annoying where characters say they leave then they return. And this is a massive problem that the next step has. 
just let the character leave and let us fans tie up the plot lines on in our own special way don't ruin their legacies also they're bringing back for season eight a lot of unseen characters and there are spec there is speculation that uh cassie might return i hope they don't misuse cassie for this because cassie was the most underrated character of all time and they're also bringing back nick from season three oh i bet they're going to pull a two nicks joke please do a two nicks joke but anywho um we a lot of characters might return as well as jackie jackie might even return which is what i'm dreading are they gonna are they gonna make them return the next season as in season nine that's the problem with returns with the next steps problem is they get rid of characters and they bring them back again the next season at least with abby the when she i know they didn't part on good terms but at least we can the fans can theorize what happened with her character as with sierra as with heather as with josh as with zara and a lot of people heck we could even theorize that lola became a time traveling russian princess and then ended up becoming the most horrible person in the world and being held at ransom oh come on yes i've seen that episode of ransom and yes i got it got excited when the the red spd ranger was in it as well and i wanted the spd rangers to all turn up and for it to turn into an episode of power rangers sorry god imagine that crossover infinity war 3 this time it's real bro but anywho sorry a returning character i'm gl at least we can come up with our own plot lines for what happens to them so for me i'd say heather moved in with josh josh uh started dating zara and i and the and they all live in a house together and there's a massive sitcom about it now a marvel example of returns is endgame and infinity war i think everyone lost it when everyone returned in endgame because it was a sign of hope and the situation was desperate as was and it, this was also one of chadwick boseman's last outings as black panther before his for his sad death now in doctor who when they brought back davros in series nine again we were all surprised but but they spoiled the one thing that made davros davros they made him open his eyes they as well as the return of gallifrey that again a huge surprise but it turns out it was trapped in the end of the universe that that wasn't that for me ruined it completely you know that ruined doc that that ruined season nine a return should be handled with care you don't tarnish their legacy by putting saying oh they were doing this all the time you have to make their story interesting and which makes me think about series eight with all the other characters returning 
who they will be and what exactly happened. The thing is, the writers, writers need to handle characters with care. Treat them like their own family. Not like they're just objects or treated like they don't matter in the universe or like they're just some thing you write down on paper. Characters should be taken seriously. There are many returns that I want to happen. And lead up to the surprise. Don't reveal... Oh, uh, Ali Goodbun's returning in the next step, season 8. Don't say that. Don't reveal it on social media. Leave it for a big surprise. Leave it as a big plot twist saying, we're working against you. This is what some writers need to think about when they want to bring back a character. Heck, I'm glad that Skylar's story ended with her achieving her dreams because she deserved it. She worked harder than anyone on the team. She stood up to Riley when she needed it, when she needed to. And she she wanted to she it was all about what she wanted and not anyone else for that i can relate to so another transformers example and i'm going to go over the transformers route here is when optimus prime returned in the g1 cartoons it kind of or in japan with the, all the headmasters Optimus should have stayed dead as well. Optimus Prime's death scene was one of the saddest deaths for any kids in the 80s. This was their hero. And now with no one to lead the Autobots, they decided to bring back the one thing that, you know, the one... They decided to bring in... The successor, Rodimus Prime, which is what's so beautiful about the Transformers movie. We then, another uh, example is Transformers Robots in Disguise 2015. This was the most hated Transformers show on the planet because it brought back Optimus Prime and tarnished him. So... In Beast, the Beast Hunters movie, he sacrificed himself to save Cybertron. That's where it should have ended. It sh we shouldn't have continued the story of Bumblebee. And we shouldn't have brought back Optimus Prime altogether. Guys, the thing about returns is they need to be handled with care. And it needs to be someone who knows what they're doing in the writer's room and doesn't say oh she was sitting here all along when the thing blew up so she's okay that's why she's been gone for 15 years that's not how you do it if you're killing someone off kill them off don't bring them back the ball queen in star trek voyager's return alice cringe returning to the role was a surprise to everyone because the Ball Queen was the one foe that Jean-Luc Picard nearly defeated. And now she's going to take on Catherine Janeway. And it also tied up loose ends to Star Trek. Balana Torres gave birth. And they returned to the Delta... No, the Al they returned to Earth. After taking a shortcut out of the Delta Quadrant. At least keep a return. <sighs> At least keep a return. A surprise. Let the audience be engaged and say, 
Oh, this person's returned. Yay! And cheer. Let's keep it a surprise. Let them cheer for themselves. So that's all I've got time for today. So goodbye and good night.